once again hello and Baha'i greeting to all the people of the planet wherever you are whoever you are may God be with you at all time today is uh, 13th of uh, actually it's uh, 13th of uh, November 2010 about 11 o'clock in the night and uh, for a few days there was delay I could not continue producing these videos uh, now resuming back as I uh, was saying on the last time we're going to uh, continue to examine the Baha'i faith um, uh, the topic shall be uh, uh, evolution we're going to look into the topic of evolution and see how it works. In 1800, mid-1800, when uh, Baha'i Faith started in 1844, and actually Baha'u'llah uh, declared his mission in 1963, And Baha'i Faith began after Bob was martyred in Iran. Baha'u'llah came and declared his mission. The Baha'i Faith was founded. And Baha'u'llah was revising the religion of the past, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, revising it in the new religion of God, new faith of God, explaining for the people of today. At the same time, at the same time, very strange, simultaneously almost, in around 63, there was something also happening in Europe, followed by the you know, Industrial Revolution. A giant philosopher of Germany, Karl Marx, Friedrich Engels, I think right around uh, 1963, those days mm -hmm. that when they, he wrote his book, Das Capital. And in England, at around the same time, uh, I think uh, 1859, I believe, don't quote me on these dates, but it's just about the time that I think the book Origin of a Species came and really shocked the world of religion, of the holy books and everything else in England and uh, Karl Marx was totally approaching the systems of the capitalism and uh, start a new materialistic way shall we say. So Baha'i Faith in Iran in the East I would say start Baha'i Faith in place of the old religion proposing a new ways new explanation which would include theories of the evolution and at the same time, Karl Marx starts sets to go towards the materialism and absolutely vehemently says all these books are totally outdated and no good. And uh, Charles Darwin, who was not a communist or materialist, I, I, I think, he just uh, loved this idea of uh, evolution and he was working always on it, selectionist theory. I think the whole thing it starts with uh, uh, Lamarck from France who gave a theory on uh, evolution. He was saying things like uh, giraffe, uh, uh, you know, wanted to eat and there was not enough food. So they stretched their neck right up to brows from the higher branch and gradually their neck increased. That theory was not noticed because it was not really a scientific theory. It was more of a philosophical, you know, ideas it lacked the evidences and whatnot but um, Darwin proposed a very scientific uh, good scientific theory based on evidences based on specimen and data and everything else he essentially said that uh, there's no such thing that uh, sudden creations of man or anything from the soil as the book says the holy books and this and that he said the whole thing happened gradually slowly from a point and progressively 
towards betterment. And he basically says that uh, the living beings, human animals, they're struggling for life, for food, for habitat, for reproduction. And there are winners. Those who win, they're fitter. And that's how the survival of fittest comes. The weak dies and the fittest comes in. This thing causes minor changes, he says, into the winners that accumulates gradually into variations and new races and ultimately a new species. That's in his book, The Origin of a Species, uh, that he explained these things. And all of these things are dictated and mechanized through the natural selections because the nature will decide, okay, you need to have these or you need to have that. Therefore, certain things, you know, dies, man had tails, tails is no useful, gradually tail goes away. Or other things that are good comes into effect. I wrote uh, some uh, pages a few years ago about these topics and I'm going to, uh, going to refer to it today in areas. So as soon as the book comes out, of course, it was a big shock. The whole church and everything came into the questions. Materialism was just proliferating. You know, he's from one side, Karl Marx from the others. They're just totally approaching everything. And uh, basically their cause is destructions of their religion and the construction of the new materialism, which according to them was the fact. And Baha'u'llah in uh, Iran was constructing a new spirituality, a new religion, a new faith that fits today. And we're going to discuss all of this. So as soon as the book comes, creationists, ooh, they didn't like it. Creationist means those who oppose completely the theory of Darwin and they're sticking to the ideas of the book. I have one of those books here, uh, recently written. I don't know if you can see it. The book is called Evolution Deceit by uh, a name, a pen name, I suppose. Harun Yahya, must be a Turkish man. Uh, as written a scientific book, which is regurgitations, you know, of the opinions and others. But uh, this is one of them, creationist guy, a reactionist, uh, who thinks there's only two ways. is either his way or highway. So he says there are two opinions. Either the opinion of the book, which suddenly man was created by Allah, or the way we have to go through the... Uh, Darwin. We're going to prove that Darwin is wrong, he says. Therefore, there's no other way. This is what he says, actually. He says, there are two views that can be set forth regarding how living beings came into being on earth. The first is that all living beings were created by Allah in their present complex structure. The second is that life was formed by unconscious, random consciousness. He continues, According to the rule of science, if there are two alternative explanations concerning an event, and if one of them has a likely a zero a possibility of realization, the theory of evolution he means, then the other one is the correct alternative. What a conclusion that he thinks there's only two alternatives, Darwinism or his ways which he think, by the way, is the way of God. So, uh, that another thing that happened, actually, those days, while Darwin was working on this, uh, you know, colossal theory of uh, evolution, there was an Austrian monk, uh, Hugo de Vries, uh, uh, no, Austrian monk George Mendel. Uh, he was a brilliant man, but he just remained unknown. He was working on the pea plants and he basically found uh, these laws of inheritance, independent assortment, hybrid, and all that. I can't explain to you all that right now. But 
his work was totally unnoticed and he says where the sources of the changes are really there what is happening in the nature he called them factors you know what does this not genes but it was uh, remain unnoticed I think around 1900, when the Hubert de Vries from Holland, he takes spring rose, spring primrose plant from America back to Holland, and he just saw that this plant is different from the one in America. There's some of them are short, tall, with their red leaves, you know, red veins on the leaflets. So. It was a different, totally different plan as it was in America. So he concluded that mutation is not happening like this, but it's happening in a sudden jump, mutation, jump. And it's not gradual and it's not progressive either because sometimes it can go backward. And uh, so he didn't again do very much, but he had to go back. Uh, he found this work of, uh, of uh, George Mendel that uh, it was, I think, published in some newspaper. And he uh, he was he was more of a discovery of the work of Mendel. So at this now, when this thing comes up, you know, uh, mutations, and they found out that these changes that's happening in people will not be inherited. Uh, uh, a new theory came in, it's called basically a new Darwinism, neo-Darwinisms. There are a few of them like uh, Mr. Dobzhansky and uh, Asta Benz and Merge and Julian Hawksley and others, they put a selectionist theory and they said, okay, it's the gene mutations. Basically, there's genotype and phenotype. Genotype is genotypics, anything that's within the cell nucleus and phenotype outside. Anything that happens outside, like if my hand gets cut off, uh, my children will not be born with a cut off hand. But if something happens within the cell of my body, reproductive cells, that is genotype. That would be inherited. And that will be the raw material for all the changes. And uh, the changes can happen basically either through the sexual product production, reproduction, and people, you know, producing offspring, or uh, when uh, uh, self-copying happens, uh, autosynthesis, hybridizations of the chromosomes, they copy themselves. Uh, and basically the gene mutation, they call it gene aberration, is all about the minute changes, minor changes. So a micro mutations has not resulted in a new species. So they thought, okay, there must be a macro mutation, so a higher sudden big jump. And this uh, micro mutations, small, minute, dismal changes. It might be dismal in a, um, a complex body like mine, but in a bacteria and a small organism it is a big change for a bacteria like a, a basically a non virulent bacteria if it has a capsule around it it becomes a virulent that is poisonous but that's just a mutation it can happen every day